About 115 years ago, this chap, Professor Wilhelm Ronkton, was playing around with things called cathode ray tubes. Uh, cathode rays are produced when you take an empty glass tank, as we've got here, take all the air out, you put a whopping great big voltage across that tank, uh, and something goes from the cathode, the negative electrode, to the anode, the positive electrode. 115 years ago, they had no idea what this was, but they called them cathode rays. And Ronkton knew that you could use these cathode rays to push a paddle wheel along, as you can see there. And he also knew that you could do things like bend them with a magnet. So some of you may still have a cathode ray tube in your house if you've got an old-fashioned TV. Uh, and if you take a magnet uh, and you don't mind dispensing with the TV, you can bend the cathode rays as they hit the screen. And for those of you over in the corner there, you can see bending the cathode rays. So Ronkton knows quite a lot about these cathode rays, but he's about to discover something which is going to change the world. This is his lab, uh, and in his lab, he's got some photographic film knocking around in the corner somewhere. Photographic films are stuff that your mum and dad used to use in their cameras before they all went digital. Uh, and it's very sensitive to light, so he kept it wrapped up carefully so that no light could get to it. And he found when he started playing around with his cathode ray tubes that something like light seemed to get into the film through the covering. It didn't matter if he covered it in wood or even his own hand. Still, the uh, cathode rays were producing some radiation that would get through to the film. When he put his hand in front of the film, he saw a picture like this. Actually, this is his wife's hand. Uh, the picture on the left shows the ring on her finger, and the picture on the right is a recreation, modern recreation. And you can see that the x-rays have a tougher job getting through the ring than they do through the bones, uh, and a tougher job getting through the bones than they do the other softer bits of your, uh, your body. So Runkton has, almost by accident, found a way of seeing inside his own body. And when he publishes this, the world goes bananas. The world is totally gripped and fascinated by the idea that we can see inside our bodies with this new light. And everybody wants a piece of the action. Long before uh, Brian Cox is the darling of science, Runkton gets there first. He is the original scientific superhero. Runkton makes his discovery just before Christmas in 1895. And just six weeks later, pretty much the whole Western world is starting to take pictures like this. A remarkably short period of time. And they're still used today, and they're still probably the commonest way that we have of seeing inside our bodies. Uh, so this is a cathode ray tube. This is where you put your photographic film, or today it would be something like you have a new digital camera instead. Uh, and the patient lies here. They're blasted with these mysterious X-rays that come from the cathode ray tube, uh, and we create shadows of what's inside the body, not unlike this one. So this is the spine. The X-rays have a tough job getting through the spine, but not such a difficult job getting through the air of the lungs. And this bit of the lungs on the left here is filled with pus uh, and all kinds of coagulating mess uh, because this person has got a lung infection. Another, you might have an x-ray to look at a broken bone. It's not strictly necessary to take this x-ray to diagnose that this person's broken their leg because the bone is actually sticking out of the side of their leg, but it's quite a useful x-ray to have because look at all these bits and pieces. The surgeon certainly wants to know where they are so he can fish, fish them out when he's uh, doing a repair. You're going to have an x-ray at some time, I guess, when you go to the dentist. And the important thing I want you to see about this picture is that the fillings, they're metallic and they're very dense. And the x-rays have a really tough job getting through those. 
and we can use that to our advantage by filling the bits of our body which are otherwise fairly watery uh, and difficult to see on an x-ray with metallic stuff. Uh, and here, the large intestine has been filled with a dense material called barium. And we can use the same trick. Here we're using a dense material called iodine and injecting it into the arteries uh, around the heart. Uh, when you get to my age, uh, those arteries may start to fur up and narrow a little bit. And this is a great way to see any possible narrowing of those arteries. And I guess another reason that you're going to have an x-ray is because you've had an accident and you go to A&E. Uh, and again, not strictly necessary to take this x-ray to diagnose the problem. The patient has been stabbed in the eye. But you still do want to take an x-ray because when you pull that knife out, you do want to be sure it hasn't gone into, say, the patient's brain and they're going to bleed to death. So that's x-rays. They're still the most common way that we have of seeing inside our bodies, but they're not the only way. There are several others, and I want to tell you about those too. 